welcome to another episode of Against the Spread Sports Betting here with Ekman and Sean. How you doing, Sean? Good, man. How are you? Oh, well, we had, what, a week off there. That Our schedules just kind of conflicted with each other, so we weren't able to do the episode last week uh, in our record show for that for last week because it wasn't bad for you. I guess you were 12 and 11, so, I mean, you still made money. Well, yeah, it was looking good lost, till, lost uh, juice, so. it was looking yeah. good till the end there. Yeah, yeah, Monday night killed us both actually. Made it hard. Yeah, I was seven and nine last week. So as of right now, our records uh, are Sean is thirty one and 47 percent. I'm seven and nine or twenty three and twenty nine at forty four percent. So Sean's got the little bit of an edge on me, but we're still both terrible right at this moment. But we're trying to pick it up this week. See what we can do. We're here for the people, Josh. Yeah, you know, we're, we're trying to make everyone money. I don't want to say bet against us, but we got to pick it up. Yeah. We have any respect nice thing that. is, is I mean, at least for your, I mean, right now we're right there on that edge that we have one good week and we're mm-hmm. right back, right back in the positive. So, I mean, we're not like totally crap in the bed right now. So that's yeah. the nice, nice thing about it. Stay tuned folks. It's but, coming around. Yep. Let's see what, see what we got going on though. And now uh, we're into week four. I'm not a huge fan of the week four lineup, but We'll see what it's all what's all going on here. But first, before we get into that, let's kind of recap uh, your Detroit Lions please, uh, please, last night because yeah. man, they. I mean, I know it's a Green Bay team that's probably not the hottest right at this moment, but all in all, the Lions are looking really good right now. Thursday night, man. You know, usually not a big fan of the Thursday night games, but all week I was pumped about this one just for the fact that we were able to make a statement yesterday and i think that was huge um yep arrowhead lambo two of the toughest places to play we go in we take care of business and it didn't it didn't look like a fair fight in the first half green bay tried in the second yeah. half but uh detroit closed the door pretty quick so I'm, I'm really happy for for my team and um i'm i'm excited for the rest of the year i hope everyone is too yeah, all around Detroit's looking good. I mean, on defense and on offense, uh, Jared Goff's actually looking really good this year so far. Uh, I, I love the tight end Laporta. Mm-hmm. I have him on one of my fantasy teams, and he's been yeah, been tremendous this year. Where I thought I was going to be short at uh, tight end. Uh, That's funny. Yeah, I, had, I had Musgrave. So I'll tell you how that. Yeah, out. yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, so yeah, no, Detroit's looked really good this year, and um, yeah, I think yeah, a lot of things are going good there. Especially, there, I mean, it helps that they're in a the division right now where the other three teams are struggling really bad. But Detroit, I mean, they're obviously beating teams that are pretty good. So, yeah, I like their – I like this. I'm going to be excited to see what Troy has to do here going into the playoffs and stuff at the end of the year. So, I mean, it's obviously, it's early in the season, but all, all stars are pointing in the right direction for them. We're not apologizing for the division, Josh. We're going to just take care <laughs> of business, right? And there are yeah, plenty exactly. of years where we're looking up at Green Bay, so it's time to turn those tables. And uh, yeah, yeah, it it just feels different. It feels different around here. All, all Alliance fans. Yep. I mean, we we put up with this team for how long? And finally, a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. So let's go. Yep, yep, for sure. So and then just to go back on our records and stuff, so everybody knows we're doing a basically a trophy type game or bet throughout the season we're betting every single game uh spread or over under or both depending on what we want to do that's why sean right now has about 60 some bets and i only have about 50 some bets so it just depends on what we're betting i'm really staying light on the bets right now like on each game because like i'm just in a funk right now so I'm, once i start kind of hopefully getting things right i'm gonna start pushing more two bets per game and stuff like that but um that's just to give everybody an idea of what what we're doing when we give out pretty much a bet for every game. It doesn't mean that we're betting every game or with our own money. Um, it just means that that's what we're picking for every game for the little tournament series. Uh, we, I, mean, I don't know about you, Sean, but I average about three to five bets a, a week, uh, big bets, not counting parlays or props or stuff like that, but going off of spreads or over-unders where I could put like maybe a little bit more money uh, depending on what my unit size are. I, I do about three to five a week, so I don't know what you do. but Yeah, I... Uh... I try to bet everything I say on here. So it's, I mean, they're small bets. Don't get me wrong. I'll, I'll probably put big money on three to four, throw some parlays out there. Um, but yeah, I try to put my money where my mouth is. So, yep. you know, at 31 and 34, I'm not doing great, but I'm, I'm staying afloat. 
Yes. Yeah, um, exactly. And that, that's what it's all about. You, you have one big week. It, you can pay for the rest of the season. So, yep. um, no like I guess we're, we're trying to make everyone money. Just, you know, like, subscribe, comment below, and yep. give us your feedback. Let us know how you're doing. And uh, maybe we can learn from you. You can learn from us. You know, we're trying yeah. to com- create a community here. So let us yeah, know. Yeah, we, we still got to come up with a, uh, a loser's punishment, basically, for this trophy already, thing. I already told you, man. I already told you. We're going to agree on something here the next week or so. So it's it's set in stone, and we have to do it at the end of the year. So we're going to agree on something here. Um, if I'm anybody has any ideas, please leave in the comments. <laughs> see that beautiful head shine, that Myrtle Beach sun. You know well, what I'm saying? Yeah, get a little sunburnt probably. So, yeah. But uh, let's get into uh, our first game that we're going to basically talk about here for the week. Um, I think it's going to be a great game. I probably should have chose this to talk about last because it's going to be such a good game. Uh, Dolphins versus Bills. Bills are minus 2.5. I don't know if that's a good line or not. Probably because they're home team. So, yeah, obviously, you got to get that home field goal favorite, um, an extra three points basically. So, that kind of makes a little bit of sense. Should be a pick em. Um, over under is 53.5. What are you thinking on this game? I'm going back and forth. You, you mentioned the over and the over under at 53 and a half. Um, you know, you hear the up and down theory a lot with, with sports and, you know, putting up 70 on an opponent. Is there going to be a little bit of regression? Right. So I, this is a pick them. And if you give me Miami with points all season, I'll probably take it. And I'm going to now. So give me Miami plus the three. Um, and 53 and a half, that's a lot of points, man. I, I'm i kind of struggling with that. I probably won't touch the over-under on this. Um, if I had to lean one way, give me the under. I could see like a... You know, 24, 21 game, 27, 24, and you're still hitting the under. Um, but yeah, give me Miami the plus three. I I just think if you give me Miami all, all year with points, I'll take them. So, yeah, that's kind of how I was thinking too. Is and, and I'm, I'm assuming you got plus three on Fandle. Mm-hmm. All right. So that's, yeah. So yeah. I'm, that's even better for me then because I was, I only had them at uh, two and a half. So I'm going to take them at plus three also. Um, yeah, I think in a game like that where it can honestly it can go either way, uh, it can be a, a field goal at the end to decide the winner, it can be an interception, a touchdown, whatever it is. It's going to come down to the last few minutes of that game, who's going to be the winner in that, I think. Um, so I'm going to take the team that's going to get points, uh, take a little bit of advantage there. Um, after coming off a score in 70, Miami has something clicking for them uh, on, on all facets of the game. And, I mean, just look at the defense even. Uh, I mean, I know Denver's offense isn't the greatest, but they held them uh, to, what, 20-some points or something like that. So, I mean, yeah, their defense is still playing pretty well. I also – I think I'm going to take the over 53-and-a-half. I can't not bet this game in the over. Um, I get it. I get it. I I just think it's two great offenses. I don't think their defenses are going to be – they're going to be good, but they're not going to be good enough to – I think slow each of these offenses down. Uh, so I like the over 53 and a half. I like Miami plus three. That's going to be like one of one of like maybe two games that I do a double whammy on uh, for the tournament uh, tournament bets. Uh, that one and maybe in one here we might talk about in a little bit. But yeah, I definitely like Miami plus three. If you like the over here, pound those parlays. I mean, take your pick, right? Yeah. So, you know, I like um, if you want to pair digs and – hill anytime and then hit those over for the the um the receiving props I, i'd like that play too yeah. i i just don't this is, go ahead sorry this is one of those games where i think you're definitely going to want to hit and daily fantasy and then if you do like prize picks or thrive fantasy you definitely want to uh hit this game in one of those too because i think i think there's just there's so many opportunities for these teams two teams to score so. Yeah, if, you, if you're doing cash cash lineups and, and daily, um, this is a good game to target. I I would expect this game to be very highly owned, the big pieces. So That's true, too, yeah. You know, we have some other games on, on the board here that, that could pop off a little bit. Um, maybe stay away from this one in tournaments. You can kind of fill in with pieces here and there, but definitely hammer this with any cash lineup. Yep. 
Uh, second game here we got, we're going to talk about the Raiders and the Chargers. Chargers are minus 5.5, over-under is 48.5, the second highest uh, over-under of the week. Um, in this game here alone, for me, I I think the Chargers are due to keep moving forward. I think they've been close a couple times this year. Um, I'm not going to take the Chargers because I don't like that minus 5.5. What are you getting it at right now since your one line was different than mine? Are you getting it any different than 5.5? 4.5. I got charged right, four and a half. Yeah, that's still pr- that's still a little too much for me because I, I do think Vegas is good. I, I do think they have a chance. I know they're going to be looking to rebound after losing the Steelers, um, and I think that was more the Vegas's fault in that game um, than it was the Steelers winning that game. But in, in this game, I think the only thing I'm going to touch is probably going to be the over forty eight and a half. Uh, I think I'm just gonna, I, I, yeah, I'm gonna ride that over. I think Herbert and that offense is gonna start clicking, and I think Garoppolo. I think he's playing good enough, and he has uh, Devontae Adams and stuff catching the ball around him. So I, I like them to score some points in this game too. What do you have? He he better turn it around. I mean, they're averaging 15 points a game right now. Yeah, it's been. Yeah. Rough. I know part of that is the opponents they've played, but yeah, cause they, probably, they, I know they played Steelers obviously last week, which was a tough defense. And then who else did they play? They played uh, – Yeah, I got to look it up. I, yeah, I had it over here. Denver, I think, was one of them. Yeah, let me see here. I'll let you pull that up. But, um, yeah, my analysis on this game, I mean, I'm probably not touching the over-under because I don't know what Raiders are going to do. I don't know what, what Vegas is going to show up. So, um, I like L.A. to take care of business here. Um, give me some Justin Herbert. Give me some uh, Keenan Allen. The thing that kind of hurts them is Mike Williams going down, but I think Palmer is a – he's um, capable to step in, yeah. handle the work. We saw that last year. Um, and then I think the rookie – who's that? Quentin Johnston. Um, yeah. I think he he's a good red zone threat as well. Um, How long is Williams out for, do they say? I think it's season ending. Is it season ending? Almost positive, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome for my fantasy team. <laughs> well, sorry to hear that. Hate, yeah. hate to see it, folks. Um, yeah. yeah, I like I, give me the Chargers at minus four and a half to cover. I just don't have faith in this Raiders team right now. Yeah, so. yeah like I said, yeah, he, Sean's right. The, the Raiders have not been scoring at all. But I'm, I'm going off of a hopefully – it's more of who they've played. They played Pittsburgh, tough defense. They played Denver first game of the year. I believe Denver, besides giving up 70 to the Dolphins, I think Denver's a tough defense. Yeah. Um, and then they played Buffalo after Buffalo got killed uh, first game of the year. Uh, they can't, And then Buffalo had a re- basically a game back, and they scored 38 on them. And I think Buffalo was out to get a win. Blood revenge, I mean, out for blood. Yeah, I can see yeah. that. Yeah, so I, I I think the I think Vegas is not has not shown what they're capable of on offense yet, um, and I think last week that long touchdown um, uh, was it to Adams I believe uh, at the beginning of the game I think that was a, a great sign of what they're about to basically do here, um, and I, I don't really trust the Chargers defense honestly. So I think I, they, I, I think they could put up twenty some points. And I think the Chargers could easily put up. Probably thirty points, and I, I love I love this game. They probably reach right around that fifty to fifty three mark. I, I could see that. Um, what was I going to say with this one? But yeah, Las Las Vegas. I just I can't trust them. I don't know. Yeah, That's something about them. And um, you probably got to cut this part out. I can't think what I was going to say. Uh, keep going. <laughs> going no, we don't cut nothing out. We just Edit. keep going through it. Edit. <laughs> <laughs> and, but, um, so what's your pick for tournament series what, what's your pick in this game are you touching the spread at all or are you i know what i was gonna say i think vegas is respecting las vegas a little bit okay. i think uh if they weren't that spread would be a little higher um but you, you i think I just, you think well you think chargers should be favored a little bit more yeah, I do. Yeah, I, we and it might have went down since Mike Williams is going to be out. It might have went down a little bit. That's why it's down to four and a half. It was five, five and a half. half. Yeah, it was five and a half. Yeah. It went down to four so and a half. So you like Vegas plus four and a half? No, give me Chargers to cover four and a half. Oh, okay. So. I think they still have enough firepower. All right. 
All right, I like it. I like it. Um, third game we're going to talk about here. We're going to. We're. I wasn't a big fan of the games this week. I mean, I think there's a lot of good games. I wasn't a big fan of like what games were going to be like good to talk about because I think it's a lot of low scoring rivalry games like Smash Mouth type football games where I don't think there's going to be a lot of touchdowns this week. So it was really hard for me to figure out some games. So I kind of just went with the three uh, highest scoring games over under wise. Uh, this is the third one, which is going to be the Monday night game, which me personally, I don't know, but I don't usually ever tie parlays or anything on the same day. Um, I don't want to go to bed sweating out a, a parlay that's going to hit for a, a little bit of money and then have to sweat it out all day Sunday night into Monday Monday night and then lose it and then be like, oh, that was a waste of my energy. But um, we got the Seahawks at the Giants. Giants are plus one and a half. The over-under is 47 and a half. What do you have in this one? Oh, this game, after seeing my Lions get – kind of manhandled by Seattle. I think Seattle's better than what people think. I really do. I think they got weapons. I I love Walker in the backfield. I like DK, Lockett. Um, just they got weapons all over the place. And New York, who are you? Do you have an identity? I don't know. Um, I, I didn't see the news on Barkley. Is, is he playing? I haven't seen the news yet either on him. I thought he was in. That's that's probably a big piece of this. Um, well, with it being one and a half, I would think it would be a little bit more because Seattle hasn't looked too bad lately. Um, so I, I don't. Yeah, I, I could see. I would see. Imagine him playing, but um, I'm trying. Yeah, to I'm seeing it's prom promising updates here. Limited practice, two days in yeah. a row. Which they're going to limit him. I mean, they don't expect him to have to practice in my eyes. I mean, obviously they wanted to get out there and get some reps in and stuff. But I yeah, think I, even if he's, I would expect him to be on a little bit of a snap count here. Um, yeah, I have him as questionable still, so that's going to be tough play for your fantasy owners, which I have him on one of my teams, and I'm playing you this week, and I have yes. him on one of my teams. Yes, I we think. should so, mention that. We yeah. should mention that little piece of information. Yeah, so Saquon Barkley. Uh, yeah, so it, it looks like he's still questionable. Um, I don't know if he's going to play or not. Uh, let's see what the the odds of Barkley suiting up in week four with his high ankle sprain seem very low. Game is Monday okay. night, get an extra day of rest. I'm going back to a good game. Ultimately, get the fact that you have, yeah, I don't, it don't look good. <laughs> I, I don't understand the spread. What, what do you make of the spread then? Yeah, that's surprising to me then because I don't get it. <clears throat> what's your what do you have it at right now? One and a half, New York. Right, so yeah, it's, it's been it's stayed at one and a half. Um, I don't I know don't, if he comes back. I guess they're favoring the Giants to win. And Seattle's been pretty good as the last two games. They had that one bad game in the beginning, um, so I don't understand that. But maybe they're maybe they're expecting him to play. I don't know. Even if he does play, a tie ankle sprain. It's gonna be, he's gonna be limited. So yeah, he's gonna be very limited. So I I like Seattle in this one. I would pound that bet right now. Yeah. Um, before any news comes out and that yep. starts to go the other way. Um, yeah, give me – if you're giving me Seattle with the points, I'll take that all day. I mean, their score – their offense is good. They're scoring 20. Well, they're, mi they're minus one and a half is why. Oh, they're minus one and a half now? All yeah. Right. Still, I don't care. So – I don't – GAF, can we swear? I don't give a – Now, did um, you have them – did you have them at plus one and a half? I, I did. It might have changed, though. That, well, that's that's when it probably changed when they realized Barkley wasn't playing. Now that's why. So, yeah, they did have the Giants favored. Um, now they have Seattle favored because Barkley's probably going to be out. So, yeah, I still think I still think even with Barkley in, I still think I like Seattle. And even with them out, I, I, I like Seattle to win. Anytime a game in my eyes is like that two, one and a half to two, maybe even two and a half, I don't mind putting up. Like like giving points or anything like that. I don't think that's going to really change the game. Although Green Bay, the Saints, I had New Orleans plus one. You had Green Bay minus one last week or whatever two weeks ago, and uh, and yeah, I, I got lucky there and got that bet in my bag. So it does help, but it's, I, in my eyes, it's very rare. If it's around a one to two point spread, you gotta just go with what team you think is going to win that game, and you should be able to pull that out in my eyes eight to nine times out of ten. 
I should say this. If Barkley plays, that affects if I touch the over-under because I think Barkley in changes the whole defensive scheme for Seattle. If he's not yeah. in, you got Matt Breda back there. You can load up that box, and you got to yeah. – they got to rely on Danny Dimes. So yeah, and and me personally, I, I, so I like Seattle minus one and a half. I'm not touching the over under, even though it's such a high one. Um, I, I Seattle's a running team. I know Smith loves throwing to DK, and I get that, but Seattle's such a big running team. Kenneth Walker's doing really well. Uh, the Giants, I don't trust Danny Dimes for anything, so I'm not like counting on him throwing for a ton. And I think this is gonna be like a run fest. I think they're just yeah. going to run the ball all day, probably a couple QB sneaks by Danny. Um, and they're going to throw a few passes here and there, but they're going to run so much clock out throughout the game that I don't think they're going to ever be able to get to that 47 and a half. And I might be totally wrong on that, but that's why I'm going to stay off of it. I'm going to go Seattle minus one and a half. I trust that more than I trust anything. So I think it's smart. I, New York's giving up 33 points a game, 32.7 yeah. to be exact. And, and Seattle's scoring at a 29 a game clip. So, yeah, if, if that turns out to be true, give me the over. But, I, again, I'm not touching with the injury questions with Saquon. Yep. Um, give me Seattle to cover one and a half right. all day. So, yeah, that's our that's our three top games that I think we're more interested in. Obviously, I think there's a lot of good games out there. Um, I'm going to run through my picks real quick, and then if you want to touch up on yours, uh, you can do that. So, um, I just to clear everything, Sean had Detroit – Minus two and the yeah, over yeah. on 45 uh, Thursday night game. So he's already off to a great start this week at 2 0. I had Detroit minus two. So we're both looking really good going into this week. Hope we can continue that and keep that going. Um, remember, everybody, Atlanta, Jacksonville is in London. So that's a 9 30 a.m. game. So keep that on your uh, schedule. So that way, fantasy wise and stuff, you don't wake up at 10 o'clock Sunday morning and wonder why you can't put your guys in from. The, either of those yeah. two. I've made yeah. that mistake too many times in my life. <laughs> you, had, you had like a little cup of tea watching that game? Yeah, exactly. So so Atlanta, Jacksonville, I got the over 43. Um, I haven't decided what I want to do in the spread yet there, but I'm, I'm over 43 on that game. Uh, Miami, we touched base on that. Uh, Miami plus three, the over 53 and a half. Denver, Chicago, crap game. I got under 46. I don't like it, but I had to pick a bet either side. I don't like either. Baltimore, Cleveland, Baltimore's plus one. I know t their two receivers are probably out. Uh, I still like Baltimore over Cleveland, although I think Cleveland's going to be really good this year. That's going to be a very, very tough game, but I'm going to take the points and take the plus one there. Uh, Cincinnati, Tennessee. I Cincinnati struggled this year, but I got Cincinnati minus two and a half. I think Tennessee's terrible. Uh, the Rams, uh, Indy, Anthony Richardson's back from concussion protocol. Uh, I do like the Rams still plus one, and I like the over 46 in that game. The Colts are putting up a lot of points in these games, and I think the Rams are getting back Cooper Cup possibly this week. Uh, but even if they aren't, they have a lot of good weapons on their team. Uh, Tampa Bay, the Saints, I, I think Derek Carr's playing. I'm not positive, but I do think Derek Carr's playing. But either way, I like how Tampa Bay's playing. I think Baker's still playing pretty good. I know he struggled against the Eagles, but that wasn't. I don't think that was his fault. That was the Lions' fault. Uh, the, I like Tampa Bay plus three and a half. Washington, Philly, I like the over 43 and a half there. I'm not touching the spread. Uh, Minnesota, Carolina, I like under 46 and a half. Uh, I think those two teams are both 0 and 3. I have no clue what's going on in those, in those two teams. Uh, Pittsburgh, Houston, that just sounds like an under. Although the only team that scares me in that game is Houston. They've been playing well the last couple of games. Good, but I think Pittsburgh's defense is good enough to shut them down. Uh, so I like the under 42 in that game. Uh, Vegas Chargers, I like the over 48 and a half. I think the spread's just a little too high to take the Chargers and not low enough to take the uh, Vegas. New England, Dallas, Zeke going back to uh, down back down to Dallas. I like New England plus six and a half. I think they keep that a really, really close game. Um, you doing Zeke anytime touchdown? I might have to throw a little bit on that. I might just, really? just for that factor, but yeah, that is a good one. Uh, Arizona, San Francisco. I went Arizona last week against Dallas at plus 12 and a half. Nicole. Didn't know if I liked it, but I obviously got lucky on that one. I'm going to go Arizona plus 14 against San Francisco. I might get screwed on that one, but I, I might take the points there. Kansas City, Jets. Jets are just a dumpster fire. 
Uh, so I'm going with Kansas City minus eight and a half in that game. And then obviously Seattle minus one and a half for me. Uh, pay attention to our YouTube. We're going to be putting shorts out probably throughout the weekend. These picks could change. Uh, as long as we usually change them before Sunday's games, we'll update you guys as much as we can. And then we'll let you guys know next uh, episode what we if we updated anything uh, for the tournament series. But as of right now, those are my picks. All right. I'm going to run through mine. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a winner and I'm going to do over-under on all these games. Oh, you're going to have big then. <laughs> and I want, I want someone else to do it with me. So like, comment, subscribe. Follow me, and let's see how we do, all right? All right. Well, I'm going to start with Denver-Chicago. Um, like you said, ugly game, but is Denver have any kind of pride? No. <laughs> no, they don't. Uh, give me Chicago, but also give me the under in that game. Uh, Baltimore at Cleveland. Um, I like Baltimore getting the – Points? They're getting points, right? Yeah, I, get, I have them getting one point. I don't know what yours says. I got one and a half. Okay. Um, put me down for one and a half. So give me Baltimore the under on that game. I got Cincinnati at Tennessee. Uh, give me Cincinnati covering two and a half. And give me the under. Ooh. I got the Raiders at the Chargers. Um, Chargers favored by four and a half. Give me Chargers and the over in that one. All right, New England, Dallas. Yeah, it's, it, it's going to be an interesting little matchup. How much does uh, Belichick use Zeke? I, I don't know. Um, yeah. I, does Belichick even buy into that, really? I don't know. Here's the thing. I don't think there's enough bad Dude. blood between Dallas and uh, Zeke. They still love that, him. They yeah, they love, love him. him. Yeah. yeah, so I don't think, like – I don't think there's going to be that much like of a revenge factor like there is going to be with Calvin Ridley going to play against uh, – I wish it was in Atlanta, but they're going to play against uh, Atlanta. So, I mean, I know you're going to touch base on that because you, you love Ridley. So. <laughs> I do like some Ridley. <laughs> He's let me down, but I, I, won't, I won't jump off yet. Um, yeah, give me the over in New England, Dallas, and give me New England to cover six and a half. Okay. I, I think Dallas kind of showed their ass last week, so let's hope that keeps going. Not a Dallas fan, in case you couldn't tell. Yeah. Um, Arizona at San Fran. That's a lot of points, 14. Arizona kind of impressed some people, came out of nowhere last week. Give me Arizona to cover 14 points and give me the under at 44 and a half. Uh, then we move on to KC at New York. This is a no-brainer. I think KC runs away with this one. Give me the over 42 and a half. I got KC at minus eight and a half, by the way. Yep. Um, Seattle, New York. Um, kind of touch on this. Oh, we already went over this game. I don't yeah, you had Seattle minus one and a half. Give me please. Seattle. The, you give me the under, under, under 47 and a half there. Yeah, I think that's a good under. Um, Atlanta, Jacksonville. 43 and a half. I don't think it's enough points. Give me the over and give me Jacksonville to cover three. Miami Buffalo. A lot of people are going to go over on this game. I I think it's a tall ask. Um, give me the under in this game. Give me Miami with the points plus three. Pittsburgh, Houston. Houston, I like Houston this year. I'm, I'm high on them. Um, give me Houston the plus three and give me the under 41 and a half. Rams, Colts, um, Rams getting a point. Is that what you have? Uh, yes, I do. Yep. Okay. Give me the Rams and give me the under 46 and a half. I think that's way too many points for this game, actually. Um, Minnesota at Carolina. I think this one pops off. I think this is a sneaky. You got um, Bryce is back. I think this is a sneaky game to target in Daily Fantasy. Mm -hmm. Pay attention to that one. Give me the over 45 and a half and give me Minnesota to cover four and a half. I think they have to win a game, right? Yeah, you would think so, especially yeah. after what they did last year. You would think they would have to. Um, Tampa Bay, New Orleans, um, give me the over 40, 40 and a half and then give me Tampa Bay to cover three and a half. I think New Orleans wins it. I think it's a close game, though. Um, Washington, Philly. 43 and a half, give me the over. 
and give me Philly to cover eight and a half. I think Philly gets it right. I think they start getting going here. And that's your cover. Man, yeah, that is a board and a half. That is a board and a half I, for you. I don't come here to punch gas, sir. Come on. I'm, 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 I'm going to have to start stepping up my game to keep up with that because yeah, that is a board and a half. Got to bet um, it to make money, man. Let's uh let's jump in with and this is if you have anything I don't really have nothing right this moment. Um, week four parlays props and daily fantasy. Um, I said like you all daily fantasy and props. Well, daily fantasy or prize picks or thrive fantasy where you can kind of parlay the props. I think you always want to like try to find those games you're gonna have a little bit of high scoring. Uh, target like the quarterbacks and the top receiver, whatever you think. Um, you're more the daily fantasy guy. Uh, parlay wise, I would just watch the YouTube clips, uh, watch the shorts this weekend. Uh, I, I love some of these underdog parlays. Um, I'm gonna probably play a few of them and I'm gonna put them out there. I'm gonna do some thrive or prize picks this week. Um, and, and then what I think I'm gonna have a couple like high unit type uh bets this week where i'm gonna do like three to five bets that i really really like this week so pay attention to those but do you have anything parlays props or daily fantasy that you've really have already uh basically get got in on or are you kind of like wait until you hear a little bit more from games for tomorrow or sunday morning no i think like you said a lot of these matches are tight man so yeah if you want to take your your underdogs here Underdogs and quotes. I, I don't yeah. think they're huge underdogs. Um, if you want to piece together like New England, Arizona, Chicago, your high total underdogs. Um, let's see another one here. I can pair with them. Miami. And let's get to a five leg and give me Tampa Bay. There, there's five right there. So Miami, Tampa Bay. You got New England, Arizona, Chicago, Miami, Tampa Bay. Piece those together. Do a parlay. Trust me, it's going to be good. Yeah. I got a quick little fantasy lineup I'll throw out there for the people. Daily okay, fantasy, yeah. fan duel. I think it's actually a good tournament lineup. Um, and, again, we're staying away from the game everyone's going to target. So this is strictly GPP, multi-entry, take a stab. Um, you know, So I'll start off with uh, Joe Burrow. His price has come down. Um, I will pair him with Jamar Chase, QB, WR, combo. And then running back position, give me McCaffrey, Javante, other wide receivers, Zay Flowers, you got him, and Odell Beckham's out. They're going to target him a lot. Yeah. I'm going to go with Chase. And give me Tyler Higby for tight end. Give me the flex, uh, Stevenson from New England. Um, ground and pound game. I think they keep that game close. And people are going to try to sneak in Zeke there, but Stevenson is the better back at this point in their career. So, yeah. yeah and then sure. give me a throwaway defense. I don't care what defense. I think it's going to be a weird week. So, the only defense I could afford at that point was Chicago. Yeah. And I, I, think that game, I wouldn't mind that against uh, Denver. So, that game stays under. Chicago keeps, you know, I have Chicago covering the three and a half. Why not? So all you yeah. need is six, seven points if your other players pop. So yep. that's my daily fantasy lineup for the week. Yeah, no, I like that. And, um, yeah, I like that. Like I said, I think there's a lot of good props out there, a lot of good lineups you can put daily fantasy, a lot of good parlays. Um, for me, it, it's just we're recording this on Friday, which is actually a little later than we normally do. We usually do Thursdays. Um, I, it just still, it's still too early for me to kind of, like, figure out what I want to do prop wise or parlay wise uh so i think saturday by saturday night i'll have some shorts put out there so definitely keep an eye out for that uh make sure you like follow subscribe to the channel follow the other channels on gemmin 10 uh we're gonna get back into this i know we missed last week we're gonna try not to miss no more weeks that was my fault i'll take the blame on that one i had a card show down You're south busy. i had to go mm -hmm. to so yeah to get that all figured out and had a busy week down there and now we're back at it and try to win some money this week because i gotta i gotta need some cash coming in so i there think this go. is a good week to do it so you gotta restock the shop yeah, exactly yeah i gotta put yeah. some more inventory in there so but nope yeah keep an eye out i know sean has a full board this week 
he's making me rethink my board now, so I might be changing my picks here by Saturday night, and uh, I might have a full board myself, but we'll see what's going on. Uh, what maybe, happens if I just don't answer your texts or calls? Do they have to stay, stay that way? No, no, there's receipts. <laughs> I got receipts. I'll print, I'll print those He's receipts out. Up. <laughs> but yep, takes, with yep, pay attention and uh we'll see you guys next week and hopefully uh we're full of cash in our pockets next week and we'll go from there and move on to week five have fun everyone good luck all right have a good one